All right, guys, we are here with the F-117 Nighthawk. Uh, this is the build video for that. I'm gonna get moving here. Uh, I'm gonna start building from, I guess I'll just start here and, uh, and start applying glue to the main, the large uh, fuselage section where I'm going to, I'm gonna put the nose piece on. This thing came in so lightweight, guys literally came in at 700 sub 700 grams all up weight twin 40 millimeter uh and it flies amazing it's like it was it was totally shocking <gasps> to me when when i flew it because it was so floaty it was incredible uh, i'm sure you guys saw the video uh, I need to put a rock under this table because it is super wobbly. I'm going to actually do that now while this thing is setting up. Let me actually, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to give it, give it some spritzes first and then. So guys, all my planes go together the same exact way. Um, for the most part, oh God, the second I want to start narrating here. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right. I just fixed it. All right. I'm going to try not to block the camera um, like I did in my last video. This is going to be one take, hopefully. Hopefully I don't get any phone calls or distractions. Okay. So that's that. Uh, where is the... Where is the nose piece? There it is. Okay, might as well do the nose while we're at the front. Um, I did not clean this thing up like I should because I got too much to do. I got an F-35 printing currently with the same uh, direct servo input like on my F-16. I think that's going to completely change how that thing flies for the better. Uh, it's going to start out as a 50 millimeter. I'm sure you guys have been that are following me. Uh, no, <laughs> the F 35 has been my nemesis. I have made one. I do have one for sale that flies with the, um, Ultrix, the horizon Ultrix, uh, electronics inside of it, uh, the stabilized. And that thing flies amazing. It's such a fun plane. Um, you just swap out all of your electronics from the Ultrix, the twin props into the F-35 and it flies awesome. But I tried to make about three or four of them. I tried to make a 50 millimeter and it crashed and it, it just wasn't getting enough air. The intakes were too small because the scale F-35, the intakes are just way too small for RC. And, um, and then I made a big one, a 64, but it was weighed down with like all the, um, the full flying, uh, stabilators in the back um they uh or, or the tailorons whatever you want to call them um the uh the pivot tubes everything it just it got real heavy and i had i had servos for the ailerons and it was just it was too much and i and it was also um designed a little bit heavy a little porky for my liking so um that didn't work but but i finally with all my tricks i have come up with a, a plan for the new F-35 and I am hoping that's gonna work. But anyway, back to the F-117. This is why you all are here. Um, I am so blown away by this thing. Everyone talks about, oh, it's unstable. I mean, it's. It, I never really understood that because I've made, I've made a bunch of these um, <sighs> F-117s, like the RC Powers foam board, uh, F-117s. I think I made their V-1 and their V-3 um back in the day it's, it's showing my age um but they always flew great but i mean granted foam board is also a different animal foam board is always going to be a different ball game <gasps> than um than than scale ish like true airfoil true uh fuselage uh three-dimensional planes they they don't have all the lifting surface that foam board does, but at the same time, the F-117 
is basically just a big flying triangle. So it has a flat surface on the bottom, so it can just float. And, uh, and I never understood why they said it was so unstable. Um, I, can, I guess I can understand that in some of the uh, flight testing that they have to put it through, uh, it probably had to be fly-by-wire because, um, because of its uh, uh, angular shapes and stuff like that. Um, it may have caused some issues on some of their maneuvers that they had to do. Um, I actually don't even know. You guys could probably tell me better than... Uh, I got to go watch some documentaries on it. I am not... Um, I'm not a historian when it comes to this kind of stuff, <laughs> but, uh, but I love it. So I'm allowed to love it and not know everything about it. Um, but I know that I love the F-117 and I know that seeing that silhouette fly above me the other day was one of the, one of the coolest RC things experiences I've ever had. Um, the first one was obviously getting the bat wing flying the Batwing actually flying was fascinating. Um, and the SU-47 was my second. And then this one was my third for sure. So, yeah. So anyway, um, okay. So it looks like we have almost all of the pieces together here. Um, I'm going to do a little zoomy outie back to a, a 0.5, okay. And I'm gonna finish off the fuselage just by plopping this guy on here. Um, let's see here. Let's get this glued. And this joint right here is where you wanna have a, a good amount of glue. Certain areas where you know it's a thin area holding the whole thing together you just want to make sure you have a thick bead it doesn't have to be crazy it does not have to be crazy the way 3d prints work is they put a little more material around the lips of the uh like the basically the perimeter all right let me i'm going to stand up and get this guy Press down. Oop. Here we go again with my arm. I'm sorry. I don't know where to put this camera to keep it uh, out of out of the way for you guys. Um, let's see. That should be good. That's all lined up. So um, I know this, this is going to come up with you guys. Um, this, this is obviously not, not scale and true to the F-117, obviously. <laughs> you can see this area here. Um, I, uh, th that isn't, it's not me. If, if you want a scale F-117, you're going to bungee launch it. You're going to have to throw it from the top of a third floor building um, you're going to have to have landing gear, um, with the, the slits that, that the real one has, if you want to have even like 80% scale exhaust exits, forget it. Like you're, it's, it's, it's just not going to happen. Oh, I cleaned up the bottom by, by the way, it's a lot cleaner now. This is V2. I'm hoping V2 will be the one that you guys get to have. Um, we will know tomorrow morning when I go fly it, um, but I'm pretty sure. So what I did with V2, oh, let me, let me finish what I was going to say. I, I've learned that when you're a hand launcher like me and 80% of all you guys are hand launchers, you have, you probably have a, a baseball field or a soccer field or a recreational facility or even an airfield, um, with a semi crappy runway or, just not a good area. And, and, and landing gear is very finicky. You have to be a pretty decent pilot to, to rock the landing gear um, and, and get, you know, landing gear planes flying correctly. Let me just do this real quick. Um, I want to just add a little bit of glue in here. 
Um, I just never liked landing gear. Uh, I love my EC1500, my cargo plane. <sighs> that just has wheels stuck to the bottom of it. It doesn't have like retracts. Retracts are heavy. They weigh the plane down. And look, guys, we're flying, we're flying RC planes. We're, we're uh, I get it. If you want to be scale, um, maybe some of my designs you'll like, maybe some of them you won't. Um, this is not going to be that scale plane uh, that you want because these exhausts, I wanted to have a nice handle here. This is how I hold it when I throw it. I wanted to have a handle to, un to underhand it. And I wanted it to be a natural uh, exhaust for the twin 40 millimeters. And when it's flying, guys, you can't tell. <laughs> you literally, I'm, I'm, not even, I'm not even lying. Like you, you cannot, you can't tell the difference uh, between uh, a scale one and mine when you're when you're actually flying it okay so here i'm going to start to talk about the actual build because um so this is obviously your cg mark is uh on the bottom of the wing so this this sharp triangle piece is the is the leading edge of the wing or the, the front of the wing and uh and that's going to be lined up it's you're going to see exactly where it goes okay it, it lines up pretty easily. Uh, I'm gonna bring this back just a tad, and I'm gonna I'm gonna look to see how far the glue needs to go. So the glue needs to go to about here, uh, about three quarters of the way through the servo hole, and definitely use. I I like to do my little loops. Uh, this should be plenty of glue. Um, three quarters of the way through. That's good. Do your little loops. Now, the most important thing is you want to line it up with the front. Try and find where it looks like it's blending in and it's not even, uh, it's not even showing past there. There you go. And this lines up here perfectly. Now this little, this little ridge right here is just my design, you know, happy design mistakes. Um, what I do is I have all sorts of bodies that I merge together and sometimes you get wonky things like that. Um, it is what it is and, uh, it doesn't make the plane any heavier, really. <laughs> it doesn't make the plane any weaker. It doesn't make it fly worse. If anything, it might help. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, let me grab this. I'm going to try and do my... My spritz is underneath. Just hold down on it. Hold down on it for about 10 or 15 seconds after you spritz. We're at 13 minutes. This thing is gonna be so quick, guys. So quick. This is one of the easier builds. Especially now that I have, I extracted all the electronics. I have everything ready to go. Even my motor wires are all straight and perfect. Okay. So this is obviously the other one. And this is, this obviously is the second half of the wing because you can see this is the bottom. Okay, I'm sorry guys, I did not clean up the bottom. Uh, forgive me, I got too much going on uh, between family life and uh, let me just get, but what you do need to do is you have to get, uh, you have to scrape all of the, the support material away before you glue because one, a couple little strings of filament will actually cause uh, a little bit of a, a bump where um, it'll be visible. It'll make a gap for you. Just looking at it to make sure that's clean. And it is. Cool. All right. That's good. And now what you, what I do is I pinch the wings together. One spritz is all you need. Pinch the wings together. And just hold it as tight as you can without, you know, weakening the part. Uh, and just keeping it together. Don't move it after you, you bond it together. 
Sorry for all the scratches on my arms. My son and I, uh, <laughs> he likes to, <laughs> when I, I, I like to joke around with him as bust his chops and then he comes after me with his claws and he tries to scratch me. And that was literally one of his scratches. So, um, no, he's, he's not a violent kid. He's, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's an adorable, loving little guy, but he's, he thinks it's funny when he smacks me and he, and he tries to hit me and stuff. So I think it's fine. All right, so this is just about good to go. This is probably kicked. And I'm just going to hold it tight along this edge right here. Oh, okay. So just before I forget, 4% gyroid, 4% gyroid. All right. Um, 2%, 2, 2%. The whole fuselage is 2%. Elevons, 4%. So you're definitely going to want to uh, ramp up the gyroid on the wings. This is, this is perfect. They're going to flex, okay? Don't be scared. They are not going to break. I keep looking over my shoulder because over here, there was a six-foot rat snake, a big black beast, uh, trying to get in my house when my door was open before he actually got in my house a week ago and was in my pantry closet my wife goes in to go get water and uh, a water bottle and the thing sticks his head out of the, between <laughs> all of our water cases and he is sticking his tongue out at her and she at first she thought that I was playing a joke on her and then when she realized it was moving <laughs> Dude, she lost her voice for three days because she screamed so violently. I think it's absolutely hilarious. Um, but anyway, um, so the snake lives here. So we put it outside. It lives underneath my deck over here. And, um, you know, they eat mice and stuff. So I guess he has to live here. But uh, my wife does not like, does not like the snake. She hates him. She doesn't want him here. And I understand, you know. He's a scary looking dude, but I have to keep watching because apparently they bite. Um, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not really that concerned. I don't think he's gonna come near me. When I go near him, he go he he leaves the area. So, uh, but he's looking for he's looking for mice. We have a lot of mice around here. All right. So I'm gonna do the other side. I already explained how I do it. So. I don't need to explain it again, I don't think. Just get that front lined up. That's all you gotta do. Just get your front lined up. Zap it. And hold it nice and level. You can feel it when when the part is, is flush because you can rock it. What I do is I rock the part ever so slightly just to find the... Uh, the happy place and uh, where, where it's flush and it's perpendicular because all my all my designs are, are 90 degree um, so perpendicular and they're happy okay so now I'm looking to see okay I am going to now drip the glue I gotta make sure I don't hurt the wing while I'm doing this. I'm gonna do this left-handed, which is always a challenge. Uh, drip it in here. And I'm only doing this because I saw a little bit of my video last time and, and I was covering up most of what I was doing <clears throat> with my hairy arm. So I'm gonna try to not do that anymore. It's all about you guys and your viewing pleasure. Okay, so that's good. Hold that in place. Pinch these two pieces together. It's more important to get this bond here than anything else. Hold it tight. Pinch it. And then push down on the back. You probably can't even see what I'm doing. I'm just basically pinching the two wing parts together vertically and then the horizontal I'm pushing down uh, to mate it to the fuselage. <laughs> Going to this. That's 
it's already hard. Okay. All right, we're bonded. I think we're good to go. Cool. All right, guys, this thing is literally no difference in weight. And I went 4%, 4% gyroid on the, uh, look at that. We got a, we already got a fuselage here, guys. Okay. Um, oh, of course, I forgot my, I forgot my hinge material. Okay, uh, bear with me. I'm so sorry. I'm leaving you for one less than one minute. Okay, I am back. I am back. Hello. Hello. Okay. I got my hinge material. 95A TPU. Um, I usually go about a half an inch. That's all you need is about this thickness like this. Maybe like the, the thickness of your, I don't know. What's, what thickness is this? My pinky? Thickness of your pinky. I just came up with an awesome measuring device. Okay. And then what I'm doing here is I'm rocking like three quarters of an inch. Is that three quarters of an inch? Is that three quarters? I don't even know. It doesn't really matter because you usually end up trimming it down anyway. So there you go. I got four. There's my hinge material right there. Okay, let's, uh, let's come down here. You can watch how I work here. Uh, what do I want to do? I want to get my, um, oh, you know what? We Before we do this, there is something else we need to do. You need to put on your wing tips, okay? So your wing tips are these little guys here, okay? So you need your wing tips. It's very easy to, to figure out um, which side is which. This airfoil that I have is a very basic, it's almost like a Cessna. <laughs> That's what make this thing, it makes this thing float the way that it does. Uh, it's literally like just a slow, it's not a slow fly, um, but it's, 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 it's a very forgiving, upright, don't fly this thing inverted. You're not gonna wanna fly it inverted. Um, I'm sure some people are going to, especially, I mean, if you have a, if you have a flight controller, uh, by all means, uh, have at it. Um, I probably don't recommend doing it. Uh, you might not come out of it. I don't know. I know my foam board one did not want to fly inverted. Um, so like I said, guys, at your own risk, do what you want to do. Um, but I need to, I need to glue this on here. Let's see what we got. Uh, that's more than I need. I do not need that much glue. Okay, I'm gonna just push this up here, get it kind of lined up and spritzy. Uh-oh, it's gonna kick. It's gonna kick. It is kicking. Hold it there. <laughs> And just hold it in place. Squeeze it. Hold it. Squeeze it. <laughs> oh, I'm losing my mind. All right. That should be... It still looks... I can see the glue squishing. Oh, there we go. Now I think it's finally... It's finally uh, hardening there. Okay. Good to go. Um, and just be, be gentle. Don't, um, don't hit it into anything while it's still potentially curing. Um, you know what? I'm going to line this up like this so that I can see, oh, can you guys see this? I'm going to line it up like this so I can see how much glue to put on. It really doesn't need a lot guys. 
I'm gonna get this guy ready to go. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna smear it in, smear it, and hold on. I'm gonna smear it in a little bit. Line up the front, get it lined up. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna spritz it, and then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna just hold it. Squish it in place. And then I just, I blow the, some, some of the glue uh, squeezes out of the top. And when I blow it, when I blow the bubbles, they flatten out over the um, seam. And then that kind of uh, just makes a stronger bond. I've, uh, oop, my finger is stuck. I've built so many of these things, guys. I do the weirdest things, um, but uh, okay. It's good. Okay, now we can do the Elevons. And what you do, like all my builds, but maybe you guys are gonna be first timers, first time builders with the, uh, with the F-117 because it is a majestic, beautiful bird. Um, get yourself a Stanley knife and you're gonna just stick the razor blade in the slots. Now you, you, you print, you print um, my plans without, um, I don't use any support material ever. Uh, you do not need it. Um, your servo pockets are gonna have some stringing. They're not gonna be beautified. This is not gonna be an eclipse in plane, um, but it's gonna function fine. And believe it or not, a little stringing in your servo pocket, it gives it just more, more squish to hold on to, you know? To make it, uh, to make the servo kinda, kind of stick in there better so alrighty let's get the uh... all right okie dokie I got myself my little my little oh I forgot take your this is this has an L on it okay so this is my left left L of on Make sure you get the sides nice and clean because they are going to for sure, uh, you know, scrape, scrape along. Oh yeah, and you gotta make sure you, you get all this stuff out of here. There we go. That's clean, clean, good. Okay, so you get your left Elevon. You see your slot there? Just like all my other planes, dig the knife in there. You're basically just pushing. It's just creating a little bit of space. That's all you need. Okay, I got space. Do a dry fit. Good, perfect. Do a dry fit. And perfect, there's a little bit of friction. That's all you want. That little bit of friction is what's gonna make your bond. One bead of glue is all you need, just like that. You see that? And then you gotta move quick though, and then slide it around because you do not want to have, and you want about that much sticking out, about a half an inch. You don't wanna have glue piled up in between the Elevon and the fuse, the wing. Uh, you just don't want that, okay? And what I do is, I'm taking up, I don't know if you can see there, I'm taking up about um, a little more than half of the uh, the slot and I have about, I don't know, a quarter and a quarter there on each side. So, and then I just give it a little squeeze, a little squish, just to, uh, just to make sure that that's gonna stick on there, all right? By the time I'm ready to stick these on the plane, um, that'll be dry. For some reason, I don't, I don't know, you guys can explain it to me, the CA glue in this slot, for some reason, it cures faster than anywhere else on the plane. And it's always when I'm having trouble sticking the, um, the Elevon uh, TPU hinge into the, uh, into the slot. That was, that sounded like a Mustang, I think. Okay, dry fit. Dry fit. This one's a little bit tighter, but it goes in fine. 
believe it or not, the CA is actually going to help lubricate it a little bit and get it going in there. Um, so that's fine. Okay. So let's just go ahead and, uh, and put the CA glue on there. Just a bead. And then you let it run downhill and you put the corner in first, put the corner in and then slide it, slide it, slide it. Shimmy, 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 shimmy. All right. I bottomed it out. Um, might have to trim a little bit off that one. It looks a little bit long. All right. So let's do that. Here we go. Perfect. Okay. This one's a little short, but that's actually totally workable there. Um, I'm actually going to take the scissor and trim. There we go. Beautiful. Now I got that one. Give it the squish treatment. Okay. So these have a little bit of, of I was going to say muscle memory. These have a little bit of memory. So stick your Stanley back in there. Like dig it in because you're, uh, trust me, you're going to want to have, you're, you're going to want your TPU hinge to just go in. <laughs> yeah. This is the only way that you could really screw up is if, is if it doesn't, if like the CA blocks the hole and then you can't, um, you can't get your, your TPU hinge in there. Okay. This is my left. So left is always on the bottom. So this is going to go in this way. Always do a dry fit. I like to go from the bottom. So when you have, when you have this shape where it fits in the slot, I, you, you, you can't just stick it in this way because of the way, because the, um, the pockets for the hinge material are perpendicular to this. So they're angled. So, um, so what you do is you put the Elevon underneath and then you stick the first part in and then you stick the second part in and then you shimmy, you saw it left and right. Okay. And then you make sure that it's going to, it's going to, it's going to be unobstructed. Okay. And it is, if it's perfect. So put your bead, put your bead. All right. Hold it upside down. Get this side in first. And then you're going to do the other side. Shimmy, saw it, saw it. And pull it back. And there you go. Beautiful. Now I am not going to, this is a very tight fit here. So I am not going, this, this actually may stiffen up too much. So I'm going to hold it down because I see some glue and this is a very tight hinge slot. Now you guys are always now, not you guys. Okay. I'll, there are so many of you guys that are literally the greatest people in the world. And I love you all. Even the ones that have criticized, I have, I have, probably 30 customers that criticize my design methods. And now they only exclusively print my planes because <laughs> they, they understand my madness. Um, the, the, uh, the gap between the control surfaces, it's not going to make or break your plane. If there's a little bit of a gap, what it is going to do is it's going to be easier to build and it's going to, it's going to allow for a control surface that is free of movement. Okay. Um, and your control surfaces are hard enough to print. They, look how thin this is. This is like razor thin. This thing is, is going to print great because it has a flat surface on the bottom. If I rounded it, how do you expect to print this? How, how would you do this? You would have to print it in three different pieces from the bottom up. And then you want to have three different, like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. Okay. So this can only go one way here. I, I'm, I'm on a... I'm on a roll today, guys. I'm, I'm in like a mood. I'm not in a bad mood. I'm just in a, I don't know, not, I'm not in a combative mood. I'm kind of on fire in a way, like without caffeine. I don't know how to describe it. Um, but anyway, um, you're, this has a very, a very tight tolerance on the control surface. Okay. So you got to make sure that you don't have too much glue in there. I had this problem with my, oop. oh, Jesus. I had this problem with my F16 XL that crashed. I had a, I had a tight control surface because I had too much glue in there and one servo. Well, it, it was also glue on the, um, on the push rod also. 
Okay, that goes in good. That goes in perfect. So I'm gonna use a little less glue this time. See it's hitting here? That means you need to slide it down towards the wing more. Now you're good, all right? And if it's still hitting, that's fine. That just means that this just needs to be shaved down with a knife a little bit, or even your finger. Now, see, that's all, that's all I needed to do. Okay, so pull that out and you are going to a bead and a bead. Okay, bring it in from the bottom. Get it lined up with the slots. You don't have a lot of time, so you better move. Okay, and slide it back and forth a little bit and then pull it back there. And then there you go. Beautiful thing. Okay, so that actually does not have as much deflection there. So I'm gonna tighten this up like that and like that. Okay, so that's all the deflection we're gonna get with this. All right, this does not need uh, the deflection. This is not an aerobatic monster. It rolls great. You, you saw my first video, if you guys are watching this because you're gonna build it. You saw my first video, the thing rolls perfect. It, it, you know, you can, you can, it's not necessarily gonna screwdriver, um, but it, it rolls great. Um, okay, let's keep moving here. I wanna keep this build video. Uh, I, I'm gonna do the tails last because there's just no reason to make it harder for yourself uh, while you're doing like um, motor work, servo work and stuff like that. Okay. Canopy, uh, pretty straightforward stuff. It's just a tongue and groove in the front. I have not worked this in yet. So the first thing you wanna do is just wiggle it like this. Wiggle it in, wiggle it in, and you got yourself a perfect, perfect fit there. Look at that canopy, beautiful thing. I have magnets that I'm gonna put in there. Okay, uh, now these are the adjustments that I made it, I made, I was gonna say made it, um, that I made for, oops, for this jet. So let's get this stuff here. Now you're gonna work with it upside down. Uh, the last adjustment that I need to make before I release this is there's tiny little holes here. Um, I actually thought that I was gonna have to leave the holes for, um, for servo purposes or servo wire routing purposes. I thought I was gonna have to have holes on the bottom because I basically had to put the servo wires uh, underneath or on top of the fan unit, both of the fans. And now it ends up that uh, they're just gonna sit, they're gonna rest on top and, and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so let's do, um, how do you wanna do this? Let's grab our motors first. Um, it doesn't matter which one's left or right. So I'm gonna just kind of plop the motor here, plop the motor here. I already have the Y connector, okay? So let's get this up here. So I have the Y connector here and I have my two favorite little fly color uh, ESCs. They're so tiny. You, you can't even believe these things can, can, hold, can hold 20 amps. So you just shove the wires. The guys, seriously, uh, this, is, this is my, like having such an easy to build plane, it just makes me so happy. Um, I am going to, well, the first thing I wanna do is make sure that none of these are twisted, okay? And I'm going to, I'm gonna put this on here now, cause there's no reason not to. It just keeps the, it'll make it easier for me to feed the stuff through. It's kind of like a weight, like a fishing weight. Um, and then you shove the Y connector through here, shove it, shove it, shove it. And these are delicate. These little forties are, are delicate, not like 30 millimeter delicate, but the forties are definitely more delicate. Um, what I do is I keep the motor wires on top. So I put the, the motor down in there first. It takes a little bit of pressure to get it in there, but it'll go. 
Uh, motor wires on top. Ears are gonna are gonna sit flat on the little shelf. Okay, they go in like that perfectly. Now uh, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and show you what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna hold this so that nothing falls, and I just don't want the motor wires to fall out. And now I'm gonna pull gently, gently, gently pull the ESC, ESC wires through here. Oh, did I just break the nose? Almost, I almost broke the nose. There we go, I can feel it. Now they're through, look at that. You don't need any motor wire extensions. Look at all that, look at all that room, it's amazing. All right, okay, let's come back here. I already got my hot glue gun ready to rock and roll. It's all heated up over on the side of my house. Okay. Um, I already know, I already know that these are all good to go. Um, the, the wires are all right. Make sure before you glue everything in, guys, have the ESC and the battery pulled out on top of the plane, fire it up with your receiver and your battery, make sure that the motors are blowing air out the right direction, okay? I already know, I haven't touched mine since I've extracted mine. I'm gonna go grab my hot glue gun, hold on. Okie dokie, we got hot glue gun here. We're all heated up and hopefully you guys are gonna be able to see what I'm doing here. So push the fan all the way to the front, all right? And you're gonna drip some glue, it doesn't need a lot. It does not need a lot, guys, seriously. One eighth inch bead along the side, okay? Uh, all right. There you go. Oh, shoot, there we go. All right, drip the hot glue in there, just along the sides of it. Don't put it on the bottom. I know I tell you guys this stuff all the time. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do it on the other one at the same time. I wouldn't recommend doing both at the same time unless you guys are very experienced because you don't want to take the chance of having uh, a total screw up here. So I just did uh, both of them at the same time and I'm just holding them in place. Make sure you don't get the wires in the glue. Um, I am actually gonna hold both with one hand and I'm gonna pull these wires back a little bit so that I can get a little bit more glue on the backside here. <gasps> and then if you blow on it, the hot glue will, it'll expand a little bit and it'll kind of fill in some cracks, all right? But the fan itself being pushed up against the front is actually perfect because it's it's kind of, um, it's not only self-leveling, it's, it's, it's orienting the fan in the perfect, um, it's perpendicular to the airframe, it's straight up and it's straight and it doesn't have any yaw in it. And, uh, and on top of the glue holding it in, the fan, um, uh, the bottom of the bell of the intake lip is actually pressing on the plane. So it's making it, it's, you know, that's what's pushing it. Now hot glue takes a lot longer than CA. I learned the hard way a few times. So take your time. You gotta wait, you gotta be patient with it. All right. Uh, servos, let's see what we got here. Let's get this cleaned up. Because the servos are going to be next. I would say my least favorite thing to do is make Z-Bends and get push rods uh, going. It's probably my least favorite. Okay, so when you think they're set up, just try and rock them. Try and like move them back and forth, and these are rock solid. Okay, so these are good to go. Um, now we're gonna feed the servos through. So every time you do a servo, I'll back this up to show you guys what I'm doing. So every time you are gonna build a plane with my servos, or my planes, and put servos in, um, 
when you're when you're putting the servo in, the servo wire always goes towards the battery or towards your receiver, wherever. So now I know this servo, this particular servo, is going to go through this hole. So you just feed it. So this is actually gonna go through the same spot as, what is blocking this? Oh, there we go. There's just a little lip there. What's going on? Come on. There we go. Okay. So the, the servo wire, you're just gonna pull it right through the EDF opening. All right, and I'll show you, I'll show you how this is gonna work. So the servo wire, you just pull it right through. All right, flip it over to its right orientation. And look at that fit. It's a nice snug snap fit. All right, clean up your servos. Get all the glue off, because you don't wanna you don't want to have it um, not sit flat. Uh, this is the the shortest extension. This is like a, what is this? Three, four inches, four inch extension. Um, this is the shortest one you can get away with, I think. Uh, let's see, okay. Let's see, let's get this. Oh, what? Just needs to go through the hole. Okay, so it's through the hole, reach from the bottom. And you can see through the ex exhaust that the servo wire is through. And you're just gonna feed it all the way in. And push it. Okay, there we go. Good. So now our servos are, are in and you can just leave them there. We don't need, the last thing we're gonna do is glue them. Okay, and here we go. We got servo wires here. You are going to now feed those servo wires right through this huge hole that I opened up. I actually did this whole thing. I actually had to, I had to cut this slot in here when I built uh, V1. And, um, and it was really not a problem uh, doing that. It actually taught me what I needed to do. So, so now you're gonna hold it upside down because gravity's always your friend when you're feeding wires through fuselages. Uh, so the servo wires are gonna go right down there. And what you do is you tuck the servo wire along with the, the motor wires, okay? And then you feed the other servo wire down here. Hey, bud. Did you have fun? Cool. Hi, guys. Tyler's here. He got an F-14. I think you saw that in one of the F-16 videos. Yeah, yeah. They saw that. They saw that one, they yeah. Saw the and tell them, tell them what is going to be happening uh, Wednesday. I'm getting myself a plane to fly. That's right. Do you remember the name of it? Aero Scout. Aero Scout. I bet you so many people are going to comment and say, that is the best beginner plane. So we got the, um, I think it's the one meter. I think it's like three. Because it's like his friend said it was the best plane for me. That's right. My buddy Chris said it was a good plane for him to fly. He, it's got he, safe. He was on the phone from yesterday. <laughs> he was playing Minecraft. <laughs> It's, uh, it's got AS3X, it's got safe mode. Um, it's pretty much perfect. It, it's, it, it's all, e even on the, it's even on the, the it's even on the, the simulator. The simulator that, that Turkey Vulture too? Probably. Um, it's on real flight um, simulator. So he's, I told him, if you do five clean takeoffs and landings, I will buy you the Aero Scout. And he practiced and practiced and he did it. So that's awesome. Okay. Bye guys. <laughs> so I am going to now, ooh, the wing was just hitting my box there. Okay, so I'm gonna push this down, the EDF covers, and make sure, so 
one side fits better than the other, I'm gonna mark them when I release it. Um, I'm gonna mark them as left and right. And sure enough, let me see here. I have some kind of a hang up here. It's hitting something. Um, but you basically, you wanna have the wires, especially the servo wires, out of the airstream. You do not want the servo wires to be in the airstream. 100% do not do that. Okay, I see what's happening. All right, so I am going to, I'm gonna modify this file. I forgot, this is the last thing that I forgot for you guys. Um, I forgot to modify the, the length of the, um, of the EDF cover. So I have to manually trim it, which is not a big deal. I mean, if you guys, if you're, if, if you find that it's not sitting down far enough, you can just manually trim um, the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, you can see what I'm doing. I'm literally just trimming the bottoms off. I, I forgot to, I always take two millimeters off of my uh, EDF covers. Like the, um, the EDF, the little mounting tabs on the EDF. Uh, and then also the, the servo wires are creating a bit of a problem. So, and there's also the motor wires are also on top. So that is another thing, but I have the channel built in here. So that should be no problem. Let's see if it goes. And I have to determine, there we go. Perfect, okay. That's good. And I just need to get some of this junk out of this one. I'm just digging out some support material so that the motor wires and everything will fit. So basically all I need to adjust on this design before it's ready to go is the, um, is literally just uh, the EDF covers. So that's it. There you go. Beautiful thing, two millimeters. That's all we need. Okay, hopefully I have a little bit of heat left in here. And do I have heat? Do I have heat? I do, I have heat. All right, perfect. So I just smear a little bit of glue, smear a little bit of glue. That's all you do. Oops. Smear a little bit of glue here. I'm gonna actually take three millimeters off so that these things will just sit totally flush with the bottom. Um, flatten that out a little bit. Okay. All right, there we go. And the last piece is, where is it? Oh, here it is, okay. Here is the last piece to the puzzle. Um, is that go that way? Yep, right there. Okay, that's the last piece of the puzzle. Um, this is a, a bridging issue um, with the print. If you guys use support material, you can probably get away with not having this, but I really don't care. Um, it's just the bottom of the plane. Uh, so, just to strengthen it up, put some hot glue all along there and uh, smear it in there with the, uh, with the tip. All right, cool. And then smear it with your finger if you want. Uh, if you wanna get, make it look prettier. All right, there we go. Perfect. Just enough to be strong is all you need. All right, cool. Oop, I almost broke the wing. All right. There we go. So let's, what are we gonna do now? Um, we're almost done. All we need to do is, I just wanna make sure that this hot glue on the bottom is not, um, is not still wet, where it's gonna stick itself to something that I'm sitting on. Okay, um, let's do the magnets. So this could be one more thing that I need to address uh, before I release this. 
let's see. So this is like a 10 millimeter, I believe. Um, I am going to glue. I'm gonna put some glue here. And I'm gonna just drop the magnets right on here. I'm gonna press down so that the magnet is basically flush. And I always use accelerator with, uh, with magnets because they, the metal just doesn't like to, uh, to stay put unless it's accelerated. And the accelerator actually heats up enough where you can, you can actually raise and lower the magnet a little tiny bit. You know what, while this is, while this is kicking, let me go plug the glue gun in because I need a little more heat for the servos. All right, so the glue gun is heating back up again. Um, I should really run an extension cord over here. I don't know why I don't do that. Okay, cool. All right, so there you go. That's how I do my magnets. Um, this is basically ready to rock and roll. Uh, this thing is gonna go here, like that. And let me just make sure everything's lined up. And then this, Believe it or not, I I kind of guesstimated how I could get two magnets because I wanted a stronger bond. So I put two thicknesses and it is perfect. Yes. Okay, cool. So I have two magnets stuck together. They make they make a stronger bond than one. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just stick the magnets to here so I don't screw up on like the orientation of the magnets, right? And I keep it on the, on the canopy. I raise this guy up like this. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to do this like this. Use gravity. All right. So I use gravity. I put glue in the hole of the magnet. And then I take my magnets and I put them in opposing, okay? So right here. Uh-oh, stuck to my finger. I must have accelerator on me. <laughs> Sorry about the, uh, the shaky camera guys. Okay, and I'm gonna just hit it with a little bit of accelerator. So this is perfect for 10 or 10. I think this is a 10 millimeter, um, two 10 millimeters thick. So double them up on there and you're going to have a strong bond. Okay. So that should be done. That should be good. Let's see. Let's try it. Let's make sure that this is, that should be kicked because of the accelerator. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's not going anywhere guys. Yes. 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 All right. Cool. All right. Good. So that looks awesome, right? That looks awesome guys. Okay. So we are good to go. Electronics are all run. So now all we need to do is the, uh, the last thing we need to do are the push rods. Okay. Now I don't remember which one is left and right, obviously, because how would you know, right? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to fire up the old transmitter. Uh, we're going to fire this guy up. Oop, hold on. Wouldn't it help if I had, uh, 
that help? If I plugged in the uh, the actual stuff, 